uh, Ken Owen, Executive Director of Channel Islands Restoration, and welcome to the Environmental Experts webinar series. We only uh, just started this series in January. Uh, we did that with uh, Matt Gilliams from the Santa Barbara Botanic Garden, and then had Lisa Stratton from UCSB and Catherine McEachern from USGS talking about rare plants on the Channel Islands. And tonight we're going to be hearing from uh, a very special uh, presenter, Ruth uh, Gerson, and she's been uh, is with she's president of the Santa Monica Mountains Trails Council. And uh, Ruth has been a, a member of the Trails Council since 1979, a board member. And uh, she served in various officers position and she was president on and off, mostly on from what I could gather looking at your bio uh, for uh, since 1997. So she's been uh, very involved for a long time. Uh, she is an Agura resident since 1975 and has been riding horses in the Santa Monica Mountains for over 50 years. Ruth is involved in several equestrian uh, related organizations uh, promoting public access to public lands for horseback riding and keeping the federal backcountry lands open for historic saddle and pack stock. Uh, Ruth strives for the Trails Council to maintain a presence within the community to educate people about the irreplaceable resource in trails and to collaborate with the land agencies in the Santa Monica Mountains National Recreation Area. They also do work on the trails in the Channel Islands, which is neat. So keep in mind, everyone, uh, before we move on, that uh, you're you're muted. We are recording tonight, um, and you can find. Um, well, uh, first off, uh, go ahead and put your questions in the question and answer section. Um, it seems like we end up with them in both places there and on chat, but uh, we'll take written questions tonight and try to get to as many of them as we can. Uh, so go ahead and put those in uh, the question and answer section uh, if you see that down below the screen. And um, thanks for being here. And uh, let's uh, go on to the next slide, please. Um, should uh, mention that Dave Edwards, who's very involved with uh, Santa Monica Mountains Trails Council is also uh, a longtime board member of Channel Islands Restoration. So there's a little connection there. Um, this slide uh, is meant to really just tell you who we are. If you are unfamiliar with who Channel Islands Restoration is, we're a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We do habitat restoration contracting, mostly removing non-native plants, growing the natives and putting them in. And we do environmental consulting and environmental education. We've taken out um, over 3,400 kids to the Channel Islands on uh, field trips and uh, we uh, do a lot of adult education as well uh, like this webinar series. Uh, with that I'll go ahead and have you advance the slide and uh, we'll turn it over to Ruth to talk to us about the Trails Council. Take it away mm -hmm. Ruth. Good evening everyone. How and why did the Santa Monica Mountains Trails Council begin? The Chumash Indians and Spaniards initially made the trails that crossed and traversed the Santa Monica Mountains. The Spanish ranches had large swaths of land granted to them from Mexico, and they mainly raised cattle. Some had sheep. Many of those original trails are still trails, but others are our streets and highways. Those trails and ranches make up much of the state and national parks that we enjoy today. The trails now link various agencies to form a recreational network from Griffith Park in Los Angeles to Point Magoo State Park in Ventura County. Among the first people coming to this area were visionaries seeing purpose in the mountains. They were followed by the organizers and planners 
who envisioned trails for the people to use in exploring new lands. Then came those we now call pioneers, who saw ways to travel across this vast area by building trails along paths made by prior people and by wildlife. The pioneers were intent on establishing trails. There was a group of horseback riders who had foresight and vision along with determination and perseverance. They envisioned a regional system of trails with the crest of the mountains as the backbone trail and many local trails feeding into it so the people could travel across the mountains from one end to the other. Looking all around, they realized that city people were destroying their trails to build hundreds of homes. So in 1969, that group of horseback riders got together to figure out how to save their trails from approaching roads being built and housing developments carving up the hills. They gathered in the living room of Dick and Joanne Hubbard's home in the community of Montanito and Calabasas. Those pioneers included Daryl Redman, a cabinet maker, Dick Hubbard, a science teacher and athletic coach, Tino Ringer, president of ETI, Grant Gerson, owner of a children's camp for Kendler, an architect, and Sunderland, ordered horses, and Dick Hart, a landscape architect for the nursery. It was decided to form a legal organization to ensure trails were really protected. The name Santa Monica Mountains Trails Council was thrown into discussion. Everyone liked it. The board of directors was formed. Everyone there gave $100, and the bylaws were started. After some discussion, a consensus was reached about what was basically needed. Of course, there were legal forms to qualify as a California nonprofit, and naturally, IRS had to be included. Fortunately, this group had a strong, unanimous sense of the goals. They chose becoming a volunteer 501c3 nonprofit organization to represent everyone equestrians, hikers, bicyclists, youth groups, builders, and property owners. To establish the goal of protecting a foot trail system connecting population areas with the parkland and seashore. Out of concern for the future of trails, the Santa Monica Mountains Trails Council was born by a group of equestrians. Daryl saw the trail along the crest as the backbone, and Randall called it the backbone trail, and the rest is history, as thousands of people gave endless hours towards the mutual goal of building the trail. But central with the feeder trails linking major parks in the forthcoming LA County General Plan and the Ventura County Trail Plan. The Santa Monica Mountains National Recreation Area was established by Congress in 1975. The recreation designation carries most of the rules and policies of national parks, but it couldn't be a park as there were too many homes and businesses already there. The National Recreation Area encompasses about 150,000 acres, lands owned by NPS, several places by state parks, lands owned by Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy, hundreds of thousands of residential homes, commercial and industrial businesses, and an assortment of miscellaneous government districts and agencies. We believe that public trails are a recreational and educational resource for now and for future generations. Trails support health, our physical health, our mental health, and our emotional health. In June 2016, after more than 40 years of trail work, the Backbone Trail was officially completed and designated a national recreation trail within the Department of the Interior. When we worked repairing trails, hikers noticed what we were doing and joined us. Mountain bikers also joined us. More than 30,000 adults and youth have participated in trail work and learned how to repair trails. In addition, many people donated funds to us for purchasing tools and equipment. The original purpose of the Trails Council has not changed. We still maintain, preserve, and protect hundreds of miles of trails. In the past 20 years or so, we added the maintenance and protection of some of the Channel Islands trails. Initially, we worked with state parks on trails in Malibu Creek, Topanga, Will Rogers, and Point Magoo. When the National Park Service came in 1975, we partnered with them. 
Then we partnered with the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy when they joined the area. And we also included working with LA County Parks and Recreation. So you see, we have always worked with many government agencies. Being five on C3 with fiduciary capabilities, we are able to assist other organizations and the government in handling funds. For over 50 years, we have been doing this and we have a strong partnership with California State Parks, National Parks, the Conservancy and other agencies. We have accomplished a few things in the last two years. In the late 70s, we helped design and promote LA County's trail plan for the Santa Monica Mountains. With Linda Palmer leading, I walked next to her and we drew lines on a map where we felt the trail should go. Obviously, this was in the very old days, long before GPS. In the 80s, Linda crawled through the brush and designated with surveyor's tape just where the upper Stunt High Trail in Calabasas should go, and then the Trails Council built the trail. Linda was passionate about building and saving trails. She almost always had a tick on her. The Trails Council acted as a fiduciary partner for a grant that had to go through a 501c3 organization. It was from the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy for Ron Webster to design and build trails for nine years in the mid 1980s and 90s. The Trails Council was glad to undertake that supporting Ron and the Conservancy because we knew the trails would be built properly. Ron Webster built and designed trails we note especially that he built 21 miles of the Backbone Trail. It was an amazing undertaking. And he often remarked, you know, people walk all over my work. His dry sense of humor and his ability to look at land and see where a trail should go so as to lie lightly on the ground are characteristics that define Ron. His memory will live forever on the trails he designed so that all could enjoy the trail experience. In the 1990s, Doug Kirk was the leader in developing the Lower Tomo Trail. Most people have never been on it. It's a 36 mile ocean paddling trail with campsites on the beach. Doug was a former Trails Council director and he and his wife were leaders. They coordinated with state parks for places to stay on the beach overnight, illustrated the brochure and worked with other contributors. The trail is dedicated to the Chumash, builders and paddlers of the Tomol, a swift seaworthy craft. The Tomol is a plank boat that the Chumash used for trade, hunting, fishing, transportation, and fun. In 1990, the Trails Council raised $10,000 for trails with a Dwight Yoakam concert at Calamigos Ranch. For your information, Dwight Yoakam is a country western singer. A large portion of the 10,000 rays was used to build the Hondo Canyon Trail in Topanga State Park, which you can see on that slide. The Trails Council built a 60 foot long fiberglass bridge in Topanga Canyon on View Ridge Trail. This trail crossed a ravine that every year became deeper and more dangerous for hikers to maneuver. In 1999, a grant was written and approved the Conservancy received $70,000 in LA County Regional Parks and Open Space. We were the fiduciary partner for the Conservancy. We purchased the bridge and paid all the associated costs. We bought the bridge from E.T. Tectonics in Pennsylvania and they shipped it here in pieces. 60 feet long by 60 feet wide when completed and weighed 8,000 pounds. But building it was easy. It was just like putting together an erector set, and we just needed wrenches, ratchets, and sockets. The wood decking was drilled and bolted after the bridge was installed. We brought all the parts to the bridge location that was about a half a mile from the street where everything had been dropped. We put it together on site with the contractor, Roger Bell, supervising using a motorized wheelbarrow and a small excavator to move dirt and haul some of the materials. Neighbors used their quads and trailers to bring in many pieces 
and people power was provided by the Los Angeles Conservation Corps crew, the Sierra Club crew, and the Trails Council crew. It was an amazing feat to have the diversity of involvement by neighbors, volunteers from the three organizations, all working together to assist the contractor. For three hours, there was start and stop excitement, suspense, prayer, luck, and finally teamwork in the truest sense as we maneuvered the bridge. Ron Webster was the design consultant. He had some people on the far side of the ravine with most on the near side. Along with strong ropes and the small excavator, we still had touching moments while we balanced and pulled the bridge in place. The bridge is in constant use today, serving all kinds of trails. Horseback riders, bicyclists, hikers, and whatever else wants to cross that ravine. With Milt McCauley Dick guiding, the criteria for trail crew leaders included first aid, know how to handle each of the tools, knowledge of trails, know how to repair most kinds of problems, and keep track of the people and the work accomplished on each trail for each agency. Thousands of people learned how to use different tools working on the trails. Common tools like shovels, loppers, saws, everybody knew about, but they learned when they had to use the McLeod, Maddox, and Pulaski. The Pulaski is one of the tools used by firemen. I think they also use the McLeod. Milt McCauley hiked all over the mountains and he wrote books about the mountains with their trails, their flora and fauna. And people started reading the books and then they went hiking on the and saw the flowers he mentioned. His guidebooks raised awareness of the trails and flowers in the mountains. He, popula he popularized hiking in the Santa Monica mountains and his books are as valid today as ever as guides. We developed a trail work program for volunteers to learn to repair trail problems. And they were taught by the trail crew leaders. And the work is called a trail work party because it's casual and friendly like a party. Everyone works at their own pace and rests whenever they want to. People bring a drink and some snacks. The work usually starts about 8 a.m. with a safety talk from the leader and ends about one. The Trails Council provides a trail crew to work on public trails every Saturday for 10 months of every year. Over pizza and a drink, the leaders plan ahead every six months as to which trail crew leader is taking charge on which trail on what day. And that information is on our website. So people can decide what Saturday they wanna work on which trail. Some have favorite trails, and some people just like to work on every trail. Since 2001, we have sponsored the Backbone Trek, a one week, 68 mile hiking and camping trip along the entire Backbone Trail. The Backbone Trail was built over about 40 years period with thousands of people giving thousands of hours. It was built in varying sections because all the land was not all publicly owned at the start. Some lands were donated and some were purchased. If you start the 68 miles at the Ray Miller Trail in Point Magoo State Park, it then crosses canyons and creeks and goes up and down steep and rolling hills to reach the high points of our mountains, while also providing vistas of the Pacific Ocean, local cities and towns, blooming flowers, wildlife, and a magnificent panorama of our local world of nature as it ends at Will Rogers State Historic Park in the Palisades. It is open to all trail users, except bicyclists are not allowed in the wilderness portions. The Backbone Trek is a partner Trail Council has National Park Service and with state parks. This event gives the public a special opportunity to experience the entire trail with a support team. It is limited to 25 hikers. It includes a week of strenuous hiking for eight to 10 miles a day with knowledgeable guides, camping at reserved campgrounds, transportation of their tent, camp chair, and personal belongings to each campground, 
evening programs and all the meals provided in a safe environment with an experienced support system. This is an example of an effective outreach program promoting land conservation and developing increased public support for trails with benefits to people in the local community and people who come to participate from as far away as Maryland, Nebraska, Illinois, Oregon, Arizona. Delicious home-cooked meals are offered every evening with time afterward to relax, get to know others, and enjoy the total experience. We have been doing this for 20 years, except when the campgrounds were closed due to COVID and a fire. Some hikers have enjoyed it so much, they've repeated the backbone trek many times. Details are on our website. <clears throat> The Channel Islands are owned by the National Park Service. We used to do maintenance, but NPS no longer has a liaison to coordinate the program. In the late 90s, the Trails Council first began performing voluntary trail maintenance on the Channel Islands. Eventually, it evolved into an annually scheduled program. Since there was no official NPS trail maintenance crew, the Trails Council was the go-to organization. The law enforcement section of Channel Islands NPS is our sponsor. They arrange for transportation to and from the islands with island packers boats or occasionally the NPS boat. They made reservations for housing and provided the necessary work tools. The work schedule consisted of four consecutive days once a month from February through June, utilizing their crew of four. Santa Cruz and Santa Rosa Islands were the main targets for trail work. Occasionally, work was also performed on Santa Barbara and Anacapa Islands. Of the five monthly trips, three were usually reserved for the trails on the east end of Santa Cruz. One trip for the trail leading to the Del Norte campground from the Navy Road, and one trip to Santa Rosa Island to work on the Cherry Canyon, Torrey Pines, and Lobo Canyon trails. We are currently working on a plan to return to trail work on the islands, specifically Santa Rosa Island. Channel Islands Restoration is in the process of submitting a proposal to NPS request for expression of interest. If this proposal by Channel Islands Restoration is approved, then the Trails Council would partner with Channel Islands Restoration and work on maintaining existing trails and constructing new ones as directed. The work crew would consist entirely of volunteers from both the Santa Monica Mountains Trails Council and Channel Islands Restoration. The Trails Council purchased equipment for state parks. We've given them a gator and a motorized wheelbarrow, among other things. In early 2011, we gave a check for over $10,000 to purchase a gator for trail maintenance. This equipment is helpful to increase efficiency and access to any distant areas. Staff and workers have to carry their tools, some of which are heavy, so having the gator carry the tools makes it a lot easier. Santa Monica Mountains Trails Day was done in 1981 and we organized it together with the Sierra Clubs Task Force. Eventually, the event was moved to Point Magoo State Park to provide participants with a location that had more trails to repair, more room for free camping, and more parking, consequently, a better experience. About 200 people come, including adults, teenagers, scouts, and whoever cares about helping to maintain trails. We provide a barbecue Saturday night, and all tools are provided by the Trails Council, state parks, and national parks. Trails crew leaders lead all the work parties, and in the weeks before the event, they have already marked the trails that need a certain type of work. Boy Scouts have worked with us for many years with different troops contributing time and effort. When Eagle Scouts need a major project, to acquire their merit badge, they often plan something that benefits the community by working with us. Some examples, putting together picnic tables and benches to replace those burned, like the ones at Danielson in the Woolsey fire. 
They have removed signs, the old ones, and replaced them with new trail signs mounted on steel posts throughout Point Magoo State Park. They refurbished the walk-in camp at La Jolla Valley with new picnic tables that included food storage boxes and also erected an information kiosk. And at 12 different trailheads of the Backbone Trail, they installed picnic tables or kiosks. Every year, for about 15 years now, we conduct a trail work day on the Serrano Trail for the entire, for the entire Troop 730. And that includes the scouts and the parents, usually about 40 volunteers. The students from Cal State University Channel Islands that like to work on trails. And we have hosted four volunteer events every year for students at the Cal State University. We have received grants and donations from individuals and organizations. In 2016, Mikob Ultra and American Hiking Society $1,000 in a national competition, not about drinking beer, but about how popular a trail was. Friends helped us promote the Backbone Trail and we came in fourth. There is a local organization, the Ranch Malibu, that has been an extremely generous monthly donor to us for quite some time. Hank Grateful, a longtime trail builder, was also extremely generous to us in his will when he died. His father had come from Poland and changed his last name to Grateful in gratitude to his newly adopted country. Hank worked on the Los Leones Trail at least twice a week every year, all year round. We are most appreciative of all the people and organizations who help us, especially through the hard times when fewer people send their membership renewals. With the funding from donations and grants, we not only buy materials and supplies, but we also buy some big ticket items. We are buying state parks a new barbecue barbecue to replace the one that burned in the Woolsey fire. And I understand it's gonna cost around $5,000. We have bought many picnic tables and benches at over $800 each to replace the burned ones in the Woolsey fire. State parks never has enough money to buy anything because the legislature does not fund California state parks sufficiently. So most state parks have volunteers and docents who help cover various expenses. The 50th anniversary of the Trails Council was two years ago. And when you've spent 50 years working passionately on something that gives the public a free experience that benefits the workers and the public with increased health rewards, you really want to shout it out. And that's where the Trails Council is. Just two years ago, we celebrated royally with a luncheon party at Calamigos Ranch. Trails Council members, government officials, and the trail community all came together to celebrate. We received commendations from many officials. We had posters with our, accomplish with our accomplishments placed around the party site. It was, day, it was a day to remember our beginnings, our collaborators and friends, and our successes. I earnestly hope that the Santa Monica Mountains Trails Council will continue to build, maintain, and preserve trails for the public's enjoyment for many years to come so that our legacy of public trails will last into centuries forward for others to enjoy. At this time, my associate, George Sherman, will give you an update on some of the trails, and then I'll come back. Good. Hello. Uh, fire and rain are, are uh, agents of destructive change for trail users. Cleaning up some of the sections of the trail can take weeks. This project in Upper Sycamore Canyon was caused um, after the Springs fire in 2013, and uh, the rains that arrived the following year ripped, <laughs> ripped the trail right from the mountain. We spent uh, uh, several weekends and a few Tuesdays 
piecing this back together, we basically had to uh, build some large rock, a large rock wall with some of the existing rock in the area, piling it up so that we could sort of uh, shore up the edge of the trail that had uh, been wiped clean. Oftentimes we get all to do uh, trail improvements on the Cage Creek Trail. It was a steep, narrow step where the horses were having some trouble and even a few hikers were uh, kind of sketchy about hiking down it. We used uh, two rock hammers and we went uh, two Saturdays breaking up the rock and uh, sculpting it into a, a somewhat of a tread. It's kind of an interesting process because you start out with this sort of a uh, powerful blunt instrument and you're trying to sculpt uh, this rock into uh, into a, a, a trail bed. And it, it's definitely uh, definitely harder than it looks. Part of the uh, uh, draw for trail work for me is that I began to see the, the trail in a different way. And uh, uh, by pointing at poison oak and green bark, seeing you know, this, I began to uh, notice the other plants and insects along the trails. Particular in interest are always going to be poison oak because nobody or most of the people are allergic to it. And this yucca plant over here, when you pull it out, it has sharp uh, prickly uh, prickles that let you know to be careful when holding them. One of our long-term projects that Jerry Mitchum worked on was a what took him several years was to remove Spanish broom, an invasive plant on top of Saddle Peak. Jerry and his crews. Uh, would go up there and painstakingly cut and brush the uh, remaining roots with uh, uh, a herbicide. And I, we can report that after several years, the uh, buckwheat and uh, other plant chemise, et cetera, are growing back. So that's a, a nice success. After the Woolsey fire, we had a tremendous rainstorm and uh, if you can look at the slide, it will show you that uh, many large rocks up to 300 pounds were maneuvered into place. We filled the gap. And in filling that gap, we were able to bring the trail through, which is pretty amazing because when you look at it, yeah, 10 feet wide, five feet deep, it's a, it's a daunting uh, impression. Our trail crew workers are problem solvers. We uh, arrive at, the, at any situation on the trail and we look at the local materials for how we can repair, reinforce, uh, rebuild. Uh, there's on the right side we have here, Jerry and Dave, they've just completed some steps. The middle picture is uh, uh, we we had a washout. So we use these rocks to stabilize the, the, the lower side of the trail. And here we have Greg uh, Sweel basically uh, digging into, this, into the soil to remove some of the rocks and to sort of build a a nicer pathway. Most of our trail tasks are uh, repairing tread, clearing down trees, building trails, and uh, occasionally rock steps. Of course, with the count and fire, we've had our share of downed trees to cut. Here we have a pole saw operated by John Cross that is removing about an 18 inch log there that falls across the trail. Looks like it'll probably take two cuts. And then we'll roll that out of the way and now people won't have to step over it. Here's a question I get a lot is, are trails permanent? And the short answer is no, because the brush wants to grow back. Uh, if you look at the picture on the right side, you can see that uh, here's a trail that hadn't been worked on in two or three, three years. And somehow the trail used to go through there. After two or after, I guess, four Saturdays, the trail now goes through there for about two miles. And that comes to the end of my part, Ruth. Well, I want to say thank you for listening and please consider becoming a member of the Santa Monica Mountains Trails Council or maybe a donor to help us continue maintaining trails. Thank you. I'm available for questions. Well, thank you, Ruth. Yes, um, thank you very much, Ruth. I, 
want to uh, just uh, comment on a couple things. Uh, first off, you know, my first impression from your excellent presentation is that so much goes into maintaining trails, so much more goes into maintaining trails than just working on trails. So all your, your history of uh, the uh, establishment of trails systems, uh, acquiring uh, uh, land and, and that kind of thing and all of the planning and fundraising and everything that goes into that is uh, considerable. So uh, it's, uh, and vital, yeah. and then uh, you, the folks on the ground carrying out the work uh, complete it. So it's it's so very important. And then, you know, we do uh, have a long history with members of the uh, uh, Trails Council, uh, other than Dave Edwards and Jerry Mitchum and others, but also Al Bandell. Oh yeah, who right. uh, was an avid, yeah, he was an avid volunteer for you and just a powerhouse. And he right. came out to Santa Cruz Island uh, with us um, many, many times when we were first getting started sure. and it was just fun okay. to be around and a great worker and, and into his eighties, just plowing through weeds and, you know, amazing <laughs> guy. So there he um, was off a good book. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, and then Dave Edwards and Jerry and I, or Dave and Jerry and others in the Trails Council got together and uh, bought a bench, uh, a, like a picnic bench with a black pit for Al, uh, honoring Al for his work on trails and habitat, both. And uh, I arranged to have it, uh, the, the gift accepted by the UC Field Station. Uh, there on Santa Cruz Island. So there is a plaque honoring Al. And uh, I, I want to mention Cindy Kimmick, our board president, is on the uh, the meeting tonight. And uh, she's uh, recently become uh, uh, just about weekly uh, uh, volunteer with you folks and says that it's a great way to uh, get back in shape after the pandemic. Hey. So, uh, Mari, um, did you want to handle questions? I um, only see a couple in the uh, question and answer and then or shall I? Uh, I can handle uh, a couple of questions here. Sure. Uh, Ruth, can you hear me okay? Barely, it's kind of garbled. Yeah, it's hard to hear you. Is that like so I'm gonna go ahead and minutes? just do it. Um, Somebody asked. Um, I can even you want me to read? Cool, so go for it. Then. Do you want me to read the question and give the answer? Uh, actually, um, I'll. Sometimes I like to group questions uh, uh, oh, so okay. that. Uh, yeah. So I, I'll just do that. That's fine. Uh, the person who asked about Lobo Canyon, where would Lobo Canyon Trail begin and end? I tried to find out if that person's talking about Lobo Canyon on Santa Rosa Island. There isn't one in the Santa Monica Mountains, right, Ruth? There is one. There is Lobo in the Santa Monica Mountains, Lobo Canyon. But oh, well, the, I was talking the about the talking ones about. on Channel Island. I was talking about the ones on Channel Island. Yeah, but the person asked, where would Lobo Canyon Trail begin and end? So uh -huh. must be talking about the Santa Monica Mountains then. Well, not really, because Lobo Canyon is mainly houses. <laughs> okay, so that must be Santa Rosa. <laughs> it's got to be Santa Rosa. <laughs> yeah. um, it's in the northwest of the island. Uh, uh, there's a uh, trail that leads from uh, Water Canyon, where the current campground is, because I'm answering this question. And, uh, uh, you'd have to grab the trail map, but uh, it's, well, 14 miles, I think, to the canyon, to the trailhead, something like that. My feeble memory from some time ago, uh, if it isn't failing me. And then uh, it's one of the most gorgeous experiences you can ever have. It's the prettiest, most amazing place on the whole Channel Islands, in my mind. Um, and then... Um, there was a general question about will the presentations be available for viewing later on 
yes, we post these to uh, our website to cirweb.org um, slash webinars, cirweb.org slash webinars. If you could put that in chat, that would be good, Maury. And then go ahead, uh, Ruth, feel free if you can look in the chat. That was the question and answer section. I think I got it. Uh, okay. No, on the no, viewage, no. I'm sorry, on the I left viewage, out some. On the viewage bridge question, somebody asked how deep is the ravine where the bridge is installed? It's at least 20 feet deep, minimum, where mm. we put the bridge. Mm. Right. So that's why we had to fix it. Because now the ravine is really only for animals, um, non-human animals. Uh, the next question, do we have any multi-day work events? Uh, we do from time to time, depending on need. Um, the pandemic has obviously affected everything, uh, but we do anticipate having uh, possibly or potentially one uh, in the next year or so. Uh, we typically we all identify an area that's hard to get to, uh, uh, it takes a lot of time to get to, et cetera. So uh, it takes a lot of planning, but we may. So if you're interested, let us know. You can send an email to mail at smmtc.org and we'll put you on a list. Reading the next question, describe the kind of work you anticipate doing on Santa Cruz Island. I hear that there are many old roads that will become trails. Um, I don't really know. That's kind of up to Channel Islands Restoration. I think they would have a better answer as to where we'll be working. And, yeah, as uh, far as Santa Cruz Island goes, uh, um, our collaboration there um, is uh, we're not clear yet what projects are we gonna work on. One of the first things we're doing with the park is uh, uh, prioritizing restoration projects. And so um, I think the trails are pretty much established on East Santa Cruz Island and, and you guys have kept them that way for years. And there's really only one road on that island. Um, yeah. At least the East Santa Cruz, the Scorpion area that takes you over to Smugglers. So I, uh, I don't, I've never heard of any plans to turn that just into a trail. The Park Service does need to be able to get back and forth to smugglers. But Santa Rosa okay. Island has a large network of roads that many of which uh, could end up being turned just into trails. That's um, in the management plan uh, to limit the uh, vehicle access to uh, certain parts of the island and make it wilderness area. Um, so yeah, there could be a lot of change coming there. On the next oh, question. You, Ruth. Yeah. Okay, on the next question about backpacking the backbone trail, is there enough water along the way every five, 10 miles to not have to carry your own? The quick answer is no, but you could either stash some at some locations coming up a feeder trail, or you could have somebody possibly meet you and bring some water. But the water is totally limited. Um, horses can do the whole trail, but dogs will have a problem if somebody has a dog with them. So I really don't recommend that. People who can go a long distance without a lot of water, they're the ones that could handle that. But otherwise they would need a, some type of a support system. Okay, okay the next okay. question, are, are there established campgrounds along the Backbone Trail and are they free? Unfortunately, and I have been harping on this with state and national parks for years, to establish some trail camps. They're not campgrounds where you can stay a while, but trail camps where you could stay overnight for either hikers, bicyclists, 
or horseback riders. And they're not there yet. And they would not be free because they would need an access and the access has to be maintained. And the campground has, the camp trail camp has to be maintained. But I haven't given up, I'm still working on them. And there's another possibility. Uh, we've heard of people using uh, Airbnbs, renting an Airbnb uh, uh, home along the trail and getting picked up and delivered. It seems kind of a nice way to go, but. Okay. There is one person along the trail who has a house that'll do that, yeah. but there aren't a lot of houses near the Backbone Trail. <laughs> okay. Um, I think that's all we have. I don't see any more questions. Did I miss anything? I think we got yeah, I'm just looking in the chat. Um, they uh, somebody asked for your web page, which got um, posted in the chat. So if people want more information, you can go there. Lots of folks thanking you. Uh, oh, and then how do you sign up for the Backbone Track in May? Go to our website. Yeah, we're not uh, taking any. Sign or any signups until next February, February 1st on our website, there'll be a big banner uh, to click on. So put a, a note in your calendar program and sign up. We usually sell out every year. So uh, first come first served. And we usually do the trek in- First week of May. First week of May. And you can go to our website and find a lot more details about it. Thank so, you very much, uh, okay. Channel Islands Restoration. Okay, yes, thank you, Ruth. Uh, and we, uh, uh, as, as Susie Bartz put in the chat, who's one of our board members, we're, uh, we feel lucky to uh, have had an ongoing collaboration with uh, you folks and uh, uh, that you're uh, be joining us in a uh, proposal for a collaborative effort on the uh, Channel Islands. That should be really wonderful. Also, we've appreciated, can you hear me? Yes. We've appreciated that there are several people in the Channel Islands Restoration who have been working with us on some of the trails over the last several months. And I've met Cindy and some others, and we appreciate your helping us because we haven't been able to open trail work to the public volunteers, and we've only used the trail leaders and a few others because of the COVID. So yeah. hang in there. Yeah, you too. And yeah, it's been neat. We've traded volunteers over time, which is great. It's just sharing expertise. <laughs> okay, well, thank you everyone for uh, joining us uh, for the uh, webinar tonight. Excuse me. And uh, look for us next month. And uh, Maury, who do we have next month? You probably gave me that, didn't you? Oh, yes. Uh, Denise Knapp with the Santa Barbara Botanic Gardens uh, will be joining us um, and uh, I'm currently talking about pollinators and plant interactions, plant animal interactions. So. Denise is um, not to be missed. So join us uh, next time for our uh, environmental experts webinar series. And um, do keep in mind the Foothills Forever campaign is about one month to go and we have to raise a lot of money. So if you know somebody who knows somebody who can make a major gift, um, please send them to foothillsforever.org so that we can save the West Mesa of the San Marcos Foothills. Okay, thank you. Uh, that'll be uh, it for tonight. Thank you again, Ruth, and uh, good night, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>